So that was Minuet in C, or Minuetto in Do, by Barrios. And uh, follow the lesson for free, and we'll be talking about some of the musical aspects and fingering of the piece. Um, but if you're interested, I do have an edition of the piece, and there's a link for that in the description. So I would definitely place this piece in, at the intermediate level. Uh, mainly, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward in one way, but you have to make sure that you're pretty comfortable with your bar technique. Um, or you can use the piece to, you know, work on your bar technique. There's quite a bit of it in the piece, um, but besides that, it's, it's pretty minimal and there's a couple of jumps that you have to navigate, but definitely in the intermediate level, um, maybe even the later intermediate level. So in this particular piece, um, sometimes the melody's on top, sometimes it's in the middle voice. So, you know, even right from the beginning, it's, it's in that middle voice. Um, let's see. And then maybe it kind of switches to the upper voice there. But but a lot of focus on that inner voice while the outer two voices are just kind of moving along with the bass line, but maybe just G in the top, right? Now, you could go quite a bit faster with this piece. Um, it, it really depends. I, I kind of found that the piece benefits from a bit of a sweet touch. It's kind of like um, quite a, kind of a sweet little melody that it has, almost even a little bit sad despite the major key. So you can play around with that, like fast tempos will just make it a little bit more stately and more focused on the first beat. has an exciting quality to it that's a little bit different. Going a little bit slower. Makes it a little bit sweeter. So e either way, you can kind of decide what, what approach you'd like to take to it. Uh, so you're just tracking a lot of that melody, you know, when, it, when you go to that, that second section, it, it, suddenly it's in, in the uh, upper voice there. And, but also goes into the middle voice. So there's lots of changing, but you're just following that moving line. And it's always one single like moving line that you're really following. And then you're bringing out a balance of the bass voice and the third voice as well. So a little bit of a, of a balancing act there. And that's what kind of pushes the piece into the later intermediate aspect or, or, or level. Besides that, let's just go through the piece and just talk about um, a few things. Too much to discuss through that section there it's it's very pretty straightforward um, you can have a little bit of a bounce to the rhythm so that the all the chord jumps don't feel like like you're you're trying to connect them super legato just like a little bit of a minuet um, pulse to it a little bit of bounce to the to the pulse and then um, that'll make your rhythm and your technique work pretty well together because there is lots of jumping in and out of chords None of the chords are particularly difficult, but but you do have to to jump out of one and into another one. So you just have to be aware of that, but you can articulate it in a way that will allow you to have a little bit of bounce and then the, the chord changes will feel natural. Um, into that second section. That section yeah just follow the quarter note line a lot of the time you know there's a lot whenever the melody isn't very active suddenly the bass is active or the middle voice is active so always following that that moving line and you'll do fine and then into the third section is a repeat of the first section for the most part until there and then this is the, the Maybe the slightly more challenging little section, but a, a nice one. Let's just go through that again. A little bit of 
of a jump into that chord, but it's, it's again, it's not that hard with that kind of articulation. You know, we don't mind a little bit of a, not clipping of a note, but a, you know, a little bit of a bounce into the next beat. So that last section there, um, I play the harmonic with my fourth finger. That's the seventh fret, third string, right? I actually go four, three. That way one and two are available for the, the next chord. You could use other, other fingerings. Um, you could use third finger and then just slide these fingers up. But then you have to jump into that chord. But again, with the articulation, it doesn't matter too much. I just really prefer it to go. That just felt really good arriving at the at the bar chord with, with those free available fingers. Um, now, when you get there, I know some additions go like closed, open G, and then down. But I really find like the mixing of the of this and that it's just it's too different. I, I I really prefer just to just to play it and then just cue in the return. It's like a little bit of a writ, and the final section gets presented on its own, so it clearly defines the the, the form of the piece. So um, yeah, I just keep it closed then just calmly, calmly move down to third position and, and continue on. Again, it's just one of those things where making the musicality and the technique uh, work together really smoothly. It's kind of a funny piece because um, even just walking through it with you there, um, there wasn't much to talk about. It's like follow the fingerings, um, be comfortable with the techniques and know the piece. But I will say that recording the piece, like I, I did find that um, polishing it was a little bit challenging, maybe because of all the bar chords. Uh, there's a lot, there's some opportunities for it to squeak and whatnot. But then again, that's a great opportunity to work on your polishing. And yes, there's lots of bar in there, but uh, none of it's really strenuous. So you have to just relax and learn to lighten it up. I did a little bit of work on this one of just like playing the chords, all the bar chords. You can see I'm releasing the pressure after each one just to practice playing them with good technique. And once you can do that, you're like, well, that's that sounds good. How little pressure do I need to actually play that? And can I be really precise in my placement of it? And then just you codify that in your hands. And then when you go to play the piece, you're just you're trying to jump into that that feeling and that that precision. So uh, I hope that that you'll you'll practice it in that way. Don't get frustrated with it, but just just work on it until you feel like you know exactly what to do with your hand at each one of those chords. And then as you speed up your tempo, you just have to practice getting into that and you know approaching it in a relaxed way. <laughs> 